Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. I'm back today with Dan Uemura, the visionary founder of Push Press, and he's back to share his raw, unfiltered perspective on the realities of entrepreneurship and growing as a leader. We dive into the importance of self-awareness as a leader, how to effectively focus your energy, and why prioritizing personal health and growth is critical amidst the demands of leadership. Dan also shares his strategies for maintaining mental fitness, managing uncertainty, why you need a diverse group of people with different skill sets and perspectives to develop an elite organization. I loved my conversation with Dan and I highly recommend you follow him on social media. His Instagram account is full of nuggets of wisdom. And if you're a gym owner, make sure to look at his amazing platform, Push Press. So let's get right to it. Let's lean in and learn from the best. Entrepreneurship is a grind and it's glorified and made out to be real sexy in the movies and on a lot of these podcasts, but it is really, really freaking hard. I relate it to placing your face on gravel and dragging it slowly for a long period of time. I talked to coaches because, you know, when I was in sports, it was like, coach was like, yeah, there's a lot of similarities between being a head coach and being a CEO. And I'm like, yes, but no. Let's say I walked into XYZ University, they have a facility, they have a budget, they have a staff already there that they can hire and fire, and they have a contract. When you start as an entrepreneur, you have none of that, and somehow magically you're supposed to create something out of nothing. And so it really is like just a miracle when these companies succeed. In the midst of all of that, how do you maintain a strong focus on your personal growth and self-improvement with leading a company that's growing really fast? And what practices have you put in place that maybe people could adopt in their own life? For me, here's the deal. I'm a first-time founder. Every day that this company proceeds is the furthest I've ever been into a company. I think having self-awareness is the biggest thing. And I I don't think that's a problem for most first-time founders because we probably waking up with imposter syndrome every day. But knowing that, I've just made it part of my job to understand that I have to outrun the train that's coming. And so it's just breaking down. What does that mean? Right. Learning how to be a good leader, learning how to be a good communicator. That was the first thing, learning how to be a good communicator. Mm. I think there's certain things that everyone's good and bad at that you can lean away from. For me, for instance, I am a more of a visionary CEO. I like to dream big and try and get people rallied around ideas. I'm not really structured. I'm not a great organizational person. And it would probably be a waste of my time to try to become a really great organizational person as opposed to Mm -hmm. learning how to be a better influential visionary. And -hmm. so that's why I'll spend more time working on taking communication courses or or learning how to public speak or stuff like that as opposed to trying to figure out how to run an OKR process. I'd rather just hire somebody who is just massively organized. That makes a lot of sense. Because now you're putting your energy in a place it's most effectively used. And a lot of times when your energy is going in a different direction, it just can drain your battery. Do you put guardrails around your day? Yes, totally. So, I mean, this is a newer concept for me because previously I consider myself to be pretty empathetic. So it's like anyone in one of my time, I would give my time to. doesn't matter who, what, where, when, why, give my time. I've actually started color coding my calendar with my assistant And now she has been given the keys to color code meetings as green, yellow, or red, Hmm. meaning like good. So the green ones are things that like only I can do. I should be there. These are decisions that I have to make correct for my job. Yellow are things that I should be trying to find a replacement to do at some point, but right now I've got to do it. And red are, this was a mistake. This meeting should not, (laughs) you should not be on this meeting. Someone else should have been there. So if I look at my calendar and I see a bunch of reds and I know I influence that, then it's like, I've got to work with her to be like, you just got to start taking these away from me. Whenever there's a red on my calendar, I did it. That makes sense. What about health practices? I mean, you've owned gyms. Yeah, fitness. Oh, dude, super good question. So, I mean, everyone will probably go through this. There's a phase in your, you know, if I could play it back, there was a phase in all this where I was probably working out like four hours a day, not doing enough work. I might be coding for eight hours a day, but also like working out, hanging out. When I say working out, it's like I owned a gym. So I was like hanging out with my members, maybe coaching, working out way too much. Then there was this huge chunk of time where like I didn't work out at all. I was working 12 hour days, not sleeping enough, drinking like eight cups of coffee a day, 
really bad life patterns because I let what had to get done consume me. Mm -hmm. In the last, I would say a year and a half, two years, I've, and especially in the last six months, I've put a hold the standard on myself, which is like, I get up every morning and I work out before I do anything. And if I can get a second workout in, in the night, I prioritize that over anything else, not over anything else, but over like watching TV, playing video yeah. games or you know, just relaxation stuff. And same with my diet. There was a while where it's just like, well, I'm in a rush. I got to get whatever to eat. And now it's like, I need to prioritize myself. And my health is the centerpiece of that mental, physical, spiritual. We live in an unpredictable world with relentless demands and constant change. Resilience is the ultimate competitive edge. That's why I've created Adaptation, your guide for turning stress into strength and obstacles into opportunities. Every week, I send a free newsletter with cutting edge strategies distilled from the latest scientific breakthroughs and battle tested in the trenches of elite sport. From mastering your mindset to optimizing your physiology to engineering rapid recovery, Adaptation equips you with the tools to thrive under pressure and achieve your goals. Check it out. The link is in the show notes. What do you do from a mental health perspective? I like to call it mental fitness. I look at it a little bit differently, but anywho, what are you doing for your mental fitness? I don't have anything, honestly, particular. I think I've come to realize in the last couple of years, I think I'm a philosopher. So I'm in my head a lot and I'm thinking a lot. I'm very self-aware, kind of along the stoicism route. And so a lot of times I'm thinking about ways to get better. I'm thinking about myself. I'm thinking about how to prioritize the right thing. You know, I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. And I don't know mm -hmm. if that makes the mental health worse or better, to be honest. But I'm not just a victim of what happens. So I'm constantly thinking about stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think going to mm -hmm. rumination, that's a problem. When you're ruminating on like an outcome that couldn't happen. But if you're strategizing and thinking through and kind of unwinding things... Uh, to your point, you're not a victim of it. You're just thinking through it. And I think the best thinkers, that's what they do. They think about the potential outcomes. And if you're a visionary, you have to be in the future. So personally, uh, something I've had to deal with and work through a lot is rumination. I call it chasing rabbits. And then the thought will come into my mind and I start running that rabbit. And I'm like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. That, first of all, that's 99% most likely never going to happen. What am I concerned are you, about? Are you worried about things that could happen? Is it like more of a worry about an outcome that could happen? Yeah, it could be a worry about an outcome that could happen. It could be about something about a relationship or what somebody's thinking or a move they're trying to make, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I think um, the programs probably fit, knocked all that out of me. It's a classic human condition to be like, it's your ego really thinking through like, what's, what's going to happen to me if these things mm -hmm. happen? Addiction recovery programs are just basically like anything you don't have control over, not worth your time. Just control the stuff you can control. So I do think it's okay to like obsess over or think about, I want to be here at some point and how do I strategically get there or what are the steps I have to take? I think that's okay to think a lot about. But yeah, thinking about like, oh, what would happen if I don't get this thing? This thing doesn't happen to me. That's out of your control, really. I appreciate you saying that. I um what I've really resolved myself to is my faith is really important to me. And I just kind of release certain things. As you say, control the controllables. And then for me, it's my faith. I'm just like, all right, God, rest is yours. Yeah, the and then just take the next step. And people are like, you're going to have this clear path. No, a lot of times it's like a, a light in your hand and you can just see the next step. And you just take the next one, right? Yep. And then the light moves forward and you just take the next one. And and I think for a lot of people dealing with uncertainty, what you just said about just control what you can control and then release everything else is so important. You're on the side of the country where there's a lot of amazing entrepreneurs out there doing a lot of interesting things. Do you have a community of entrepreneurs that you kind of hang out with or talk to, or are you just really kind of focused on your team? I do and I don't. Through the networks of these venture capital firms that we work with and stuff, we do have access to other entrepreneurs and it's always good to be mm -hmm. around them. But I would say I spend, I'm mostly isolated to myself or to my team. It must be annoying as hell for my team to be around me because I'm always dreaming and thinking of new things. The world is infinite possibility. And if you're always thinking in infinite possibility terms, <laughs> you're just going to blow yourself up. So it's probably good that I'm not around a whole bunch of those people, maybe, maybe even by design. That's a really good point. If people want to learn more 
about Push Press, if they want to learn more about what you're doing, follow you, how can they get a hold of you? How can they check out the software? So Push Press is at pushpress.com, spelled like it sounds, pushpress.com. Again, it's your management software for boutique, generally single owner operated or small business owners. Me personally, I do put out a lot of content on Instagram. My handle there is Danielson, kind of like the Karate Kid, D-A-N-I-E-L-S-A-N. <laughs> I was an early adopter of, of Instagram, but not early enough to get Dan. So I had to pick Dan. <laughs> I put out at least a reel a day on kind of like business thought, ways to mm. think about business, philosophy, stuff like that. That's, that's kind of my give. Well, I'll be checking it out. I'm a consumer of good content. I try not to cons- over-consume content. But, you know, if you curate your feed on X and Instagram well, there's really good stuff that can add value to your life. So I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm always looking to follow other great founders and learn from them. But I really appreciate you joining me today. And thank you for sharing your story. And I'm excited about the future of Push Press. I appreciate it, Eric. Thank you so much. Thanks again for joining us on the Blueprint Podcast. And if you learned something today, please share this podcast with a friend, post the artwork on social media. And if you have a question for Dan or myself, please add us on there. Until next time, stay curious, stay consistent, and keep chasing excellence.